Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining this week's Stay Connected webinar. We are really excited today to um, welcome our guests from the Nebraska Arts Council who are going, going to talk about some of the opportunities that they have available, um, including some funding opportunities uh, where you can bring um, uh, arts experiences to your students. So um, on behalf of our Get Connected Conference Planning Committee, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome all of you and welcome Joshua and Anne. And I'm gonna let you just go ahead and take it away. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Kim. Um, Josh, do you wanna go ahead and put a, maybe our first slide up? Um, Wait just a moment here. There we go. If you click again, there will be more coming up. <laughs> So um, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Ann Alston, and I'm here today with Joshua Brown. We're both with the Nebraska Arts Council. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with us, uh, you can go to the next slide, that's fine. Um, for anybody who's not familiar with us, we are a state agency, and our offices are in Omaha rather than Lincoln. We're a small state agency. And we're downtown. If anyone's ever visiting Omaha, you're welcome to come by because our offices also have a small art gallery that features artwork by Nebraska artists. We're in downtown near the old market, if you know Omaha, and we're open during regular business hours every day. And I'm so glad to have this opportunity. I really appreciate you inviting us, Ken, because um, the Arts Council has a number of programs and grants that may be of great interest to after-school providers. Um, I'm aware that after-school providers sometimes are seeking quality programming, especially creative arts related programming uh, for students. And, and that's where we can possibly help you and your schools. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joshua. We'll, we'll save time at the end for questions and answers, but I'm gonna turn this over to Joshua who manages a couple of the grant programs that we're uh, about to go into. And you can take it from here, Josh. I think you're muted. I certainly am, thank you. Um, I was just gonna say, I'm gonna talk to you all about a few of our grants and um, we'll, we'll try to kind of peek into our grants system to just kind of get an idea of how easy it is uh, with all these grants uh, that that are school oriented. We try to make them as easy as possible. That's the number one thing is to make them accessible to you. So you don't have to spend half of your life worrying about requirements and reporting. There are aspects of those things, but um, we, we really try to make it easy for everyone. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is artists in schools and communities. This grant is about bringing artists into your program. So for instance, um, your after school program might have a, a few hours, two and a half hours, three hour block. Uh, you could have an artist come in, uh, set up and do an hour with students. And, and you can see uh, one of our friends, Charles Ahovisi here doing a residency with kids where he's brought all of his drums in. Uh, there's a lot of them. Oh, and <laughs> Uh, I'm thankful not to be in that room right now, but it looks like everybody's having a lot of fun too. Uh, th this particular um, grant program comes in a few different varieties. Uh, one, if you're just kind of trying to dip your, your toe into the water, is an artist visit grant, and that'll provide a few hundred dollars. The grant provides a few hundred dollars uh, to bring in an artist like Charles to do a few sessions. Um, how that would work with your after school program, it, it might be that he comes in uh, and does the whole few hours uh, with different groups of kids. Uh, it could be a longer thing too. And that's that's the most common route or the most common version of this grant that we see. 
uh, would be the 10 or more sessions variety. And that would be something that we would expect to see over a number of weeks where an artist would come in maybe every Tuesday and Thursday for um, an entire month to, to work with students. So that's a more ongoing uh, basis. There's, if you have a really big idea that that is more than 30 sessions, uh, give us a call and we can talk about how else we can arrange things. But really that artist residencies grants the 10 or more sessions, that covers a whole lot of what you need. And, and this grant um, covers the entire artist fee and, and also provides a lot of artists for you to choose from on the artist roster. That that's a really key part of, of this grant too, uh, is we have the artists, we have their numbers, they're all expecting you to call um, and presumably waiting by their phones, but uh, they get a great artist fee out of this grant. So they're, they're eager to do these residencies. So don't feel like you're bugging anybody. That's kind of the first step is picking your artist and reaching out to them. Uh, like the slide says, our grants pay the entire artist fee. And that that's usually, uh, you know, $800 to $1,200 with these grants because um, they can be extended uh, affairs. One really important aspect to keep in mind with this particular grant is it does have a deadline, but it's floating. Uh, that means there's not a certain time of year that you can apply for this grant. You could apply any time as long as it's six weeks ahead of our, our deadline. That's um, because it does take time for us to get things organized and we wanna make sure that the, art, the artist has plenty of time um, to communicate with you and, and so expectations are clear and for us at the Arts Council so that we can make sure um, payments are moving smoothly and on time. So that six week window is really important. Uh, this next this next slide is kind of a case study of one particular uh, of these programs, these artists in schools and communities uh, programs. And uh, this one is, is run by ZAP, which is the Zoo After School Program. Uh, it's run by Henry Dorley, and they have a few different program locations where they take some zoo staff and do STEM-based programming in classes. It's a really, it's a really fun after-school program. Um, in this case, it's kind of a STEAM thing because STEAM being uh, incorporating arts in STEM uh, because they they've in, engaged a uh, dual residency. They they've called Kevin and Renee. Uh, Kevin Barrett does stage combat, but kind of like talking through uh, decision making and critical thinking using stage combat. I, I haven't seen it, but it seems like it's a lot of fun and he's very, very popular. So I, I know that people are enjoying what he does a lot. It's a good way to, to snag those boys, their attention to it. Uh, Renee does her a totally different thing. She is also talking about character building, but she does it through juggling which is so much fun. And she's the only juggler on our roster. It's kind of a, a not necessarily the typical performant, uh, performer that we have on our roster, but uh, she is a lot of fun and kids really enjoy her a lot. Uh, those are just a couple of examples of artists. Uh, we also have painters and dancers and all sorts of theater artists. And uh, there, there's a, over 80, is that right, Andy? Over 80 artists on the roster. So, uh, you, it's very likely that you'll find somebody that's a perfect fit for your after school program. Um, this particular residency is meeting twice a week for a month. They'll do eight sessions with these artists. Um, and, and both these artists are coming in each of those times. Uh, so, so maybe half of the group is going with juggling and half is going with stage combat. That's a really nice way of arranging things if you've got kids with diverse interests doing these kind of simultaneously. You can also submit uh, more than one residency, more than one artist on each application. So adding more artists doesn't add necessarily mean adding more complication from the grants perspective. Uh, quickly here, I want to take a, just a quick peek at our application dashboard so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like when you start one of these artists in schools and communities grants. Uh, let's see, can you all see a a uh, grant interface screen, kind of a logon screen here. We, we see the logon page, Josh. Perfect. Uh, the first thing that you'll have to do is to create a profile on, on your page, but 
that's not so hard. The only thing that can slow you down is some of the back office stuff, but we're here to help with that too, in terms of getting your new application going. So I'm switching over to applicant mode so that you can see what you will see when you log in for the first time. Um, the applicant is me, Joshua Brown. And if I were to make a new request, I would hit apply down here, the blue link. It takes you to a smorgasbord that shows you all the grants that we have available. And, and we'll talk about some more of these here in a moment. But the most important one for this moment's conversation is at the top of the list, the Artisan Schools and Communities Grant. Um, it will give you a brief rundown of some of the guidelines, but I recommend that everyone take a look at the guidelines themselves to begin with. Uh, those are provided to you in a link right there at the AISC guidelines. And that really will tell you everything that you need to know about the grant. If it, my computer could load it up fast enough, I could show it to you, but um, <laughs> we, we already talked about many of these. Uh, so the important thing is just to kind of take a look at what that application looks like. So I've hit apply. Uh, it takes us to that application screen and I'm zooming my screen out so you can see it's not so long. If it was a stack of papers, it'd probably be uh, a few, three or four pages long. Um, but there, we're not asking for a novel here. We're not asking for very much more than a few sentences for each of these narrative sections. So artist program type, it's where you choose, well, is it gonna be that that small visit size of three sessions, three hours, generally one day, or uh, a larger residency, more typical of, of these kind of programs, uh, 10 or more sessions. Uh, sometimes people do a kind of blended version there and that's fine too. Uh, artist names, start date, the proposal description. Again, I really, it says 200 or 2,500 characters. I don't want to read that much. <laughs> just, just a paragraph is fine. Um, it, there's, it's not incumbent upon the applicant to fill up 100% of those characters. So that's just the limit. Uh, we'll ask some questions about the participants. Who are the key players for this? Uh, the zoo residency, for instance, it would be the the staff person from the zoo, the artists, and the contact people at uh, Castellar Elementary, where it's actually taking place. If you're the school, there's even fewer things to worry about. If your after school prog program is hosted by your school, there's even less to write there. Uh, next is a little section on budget, and this is just going to ask. Uh, how much the artist fee is going to end up being and how much you're requesting. Almost always, these numbers will be all the same. Um, and there's a couple of forms that, that you'll fill out too. And one is an artist agreement. And that's a contract between the, the site sponsor and the, the artist. It really just says the number of sessions, the total cost, and if there are travel expenses to be concerned about on there too. Um, and I think it's going to be slow to load here, so I may not sit too long on that. Yeah, it's going to be slow to load. It's a simple little contract. Um, if you have additional contracts, we'll have you upload them there too, but that would be also kind of not a beginner thing. If if there were more contracts outside of, of what we're covering, you would upload them there, but that's a very, very rare case. There's also a budget template that we provide so that you're not wandering around in the dark when it comes to coming up with numbers. And I'll ask for everyone's patience so that we can look at this together because I think it is nice to just have a look at this tool because it helps quite a lot. Um, is everyone able to see this Excel screen uh, with yeah. the Excel online? Great. You might want to make it a little larger, but I, it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. All right, that's a little bit bigger. And this is just one page, Excel. Um, everything is kind of set up with formulas so that all you have to do um, is, is add your numbers in there and it'll auto-populate. So if you're doing more than one residency on an application, you can do that here. A little bit of information about travel expenses. And then it's all told it up for you at the bottom. You can then take those numbers and just plug them right back into the application um, right here. So all that stuff is automatically calculated for you. You just have to know the number of sessions uh, that your artist will be participating. 
there's a few other questions that aren't going to be pertinent to this specifically, but I do want to talk about the accessibility checklist here. There's a lot of check boxes here. Um, the most important thing to remember is that uh, we're looking for an explanation for anything that you can't accommodate or, or uh, won't be able to accommodate here. If you don't check one of these boxes, please provide me with the notes uh, about why or how you would accommodate it if something were to come up. So a uh, number one important thing to know about this whole section is um, if you have any exceptions, I just want to know about them down here. That That's one of my most common calls on these grants back to the applicant is if they haven't checked anything on this list and they haven't explained down at the bottom why they haven't checked it. Uh, so that is something to be mindful of and to, to look at carefully as you're going through. The rest of this stuff is not that important for our discussion um, and really has to do with other kinds of organizations. Uh, then you'll have your, uh, your signatures down at the bottom and you hit submit. Uh, so this is something that might take an hour to go through, but it won't take a day. Um, so that helps a lot. So bouncing back to our slides. Uh, the next sort of, uh, oh, I suppose, uh, Anne, did you want to talk about this or can I talk about the roster? Um, I'll, I'll talk very briefly. I was just answering somebody in chat, actually, who had a question about who contacts the artists. And I just entered a response, but we we do have a roster of approximately 85 teaching artists. Um, and here are just a few examples uh, of artists uh, from different parts of the state. And they range from theater artists like Linda Bruning on the left to Nancy Fairbanks, who is a clay artist, which is why her hands look so weird in that picture. Uh, painter Ben Darling out west in Sydney, Steve Tamayo, who's a Native American artist, does a lot of traditional arts, uh, indigenous arts with students. So we have a, a wide array of artists available. Uh, and I don't even have photos here of musicians, but essentially, the question that came up in chat was, do you contact artists? Yes, the program coordinator for your organization, your school, does contact artists, but we can help you. Um, if you're a little overwhelmed by a list of 85 artists, give us a call. We'll help you maybe find an artist. You tell, tell us what you have in mind. We can help you find an artist who will be a good fit. So. Yeah. That's one of the most fun parts of the whole process for me is, is helping picking out uh, the perfect artist uh, for, for the program. It's, it's really fun to see those uh, final reports come back glowing and know that you've had a part to do with that. Um, now we're going to look at a whole different grant. Uh, this one is, is another one that I really think is, is well suited to an after school sort of scenario if you've got the time. Um, and for your summer programs, too, I would say definitely look at this without a doubt. If you've got a whole day, this is a wonderful thing to do with students. Uh, school bus for the arts grants, uh, they pay for bus and admission and admission fees for field trips to professional art events. Uh, that's students of any age, uh, no matching on either of these grants, the AISC or the school bus grants. So, so your school doesn't have to put forth funds to make it happen. Uh, schools and nonprofits are eligible for between $400 and $1,000 per year, uh, depending on the number of students enrolled. So your, your smaller programs are going to have maybe a $400 budget, but you, you can usually get a school bus and admission for most things for about that cost for at least one trip. Uh, this is something that you'd want to apply for four weeks ahead of time, which is our shortest window, um, because, you know, sometimes you get the opportunity and you want to go, but we still need some time to get that processed. It can't be a next week kind of thing. And and I think in general, most programs are kind of planning uh, by semester or by year. So that doesn't tend to be an issue that comes up um, if it is a very short request, if it's a couple weeks away. Um, I'll probably give you a call back and say, hey, is there a way we can reschedule this? Uh, in general, that's something that we don't want to do, though. So really keep an eye on that four weeks. Shouldn't be such a bad thing 
um, to worry about most cases. Uh, some again, summertime. This is perfect, a perfect thing to do for the summertime. Uh, we have a lot of folks who use this grant to go to the Rose Theater uh, to to do outreach activities. That the Rose is fantastic about organizing things with you too. Um, Joslin Art Museum is closed, but of course you could uh, use a bus to go to that museum or or other museums in the state as well. Um, performances of, of all kinds are, are a tremendous thing to use this for because again it pays for the admission to that performance which can be very prohibitive depending on uh, what that that might be and if you've got a budget for it or not something i definitely think everyone should check out at least and see if they can make it work uh, the last grant i want to look at with with you is a mini grant now this is outside of ann and, and ours fold of grants uh, so I know a little bit less about it, but this is a, a nice thing to keep in mind if you've got an idea for a project that doesn't quite fit into the other categories that we've talked about today. Um, maybe you have an artist that you know well, but is not on our roster. Uh, this would be the kind of grant that you want to apply for. Um, if you have an idea for a giant mural project that's going to be super cool and be in the hallway of your facility, this might be how you want to approach a project like that. Um, if it's not centered around a destination or an artist that's on our roster, check out Mini Grants. Very nice program. Uh, though those funds will cover up to 50% of project costs. So if you have a $1,500 project, this would cover $750 of it. Um, there are more rules governing this one. So we do ask that you contact the Arts Council first before you apply, just to kind of uh, make sure that everything is clear before you get going. Um, accessing our grants portal is is really easy. Uh, we kind of looked at the, the back end of things already with that application. Uh, this is the front end of it, which is a lot prettier <laughs> and, and more fun. And I encourage everyone, if you haven't explored this website, check it out. There's a whole lot to see on there. Um, I would, if we had more time, I'd walk you through more of the sections, but check out Discover Arts Education. There's a lot of fun resources there. And if you go into apply for grant, um, you'll see everything we have to offer, not just the school oriented and nonprofit oriented kind of grants. Uh, with any grant, it helps a lot to start early. And we do have those four to six week windows that we demand <laughs> that, that we keep. Um, because we just have to have time to do things on our end. But if you know, and if, you, if you're in the beginning of a planning stage for something that's not going to happen for a few months, you can still give us a call. I will, we'll be happy to help. And the sooner that you start bringing us into the planning process, the more we can be helpful with it. Uh, one of the large components of my job is just being next to a telephone to pick up when someone has an issue. Uh, so if you do have a problem or a question, it's going to be me who you talk to. And it's nice that we're meeting already like this so that it's not like, oh, who, who am I going to talk to? I have time. I want to take time. <laughs> I want to make these easy for you so you can do them again. We want to have um, people kind of get into the habit of, of giving us a call when they have an idea like this. Because we love to help. Uh, we do have funds available and, and we've got the time uh, to, to help out and answer your questions. So don't feel like you're going to be burdening us if you do reach out. Anne, was there anything else that you wanted to cover in our spreadsheet before we transition to questions? Um, the only thing that occurred to me that perhaps we would want to mention is that the first step is actually to either make sure that your organization or your school already has an account in our online grant system, or go ahead and set one up. Even if you don't plan to apply immediately for a grant, uh, it can take a few days to get your account set up. And there are instructions on our website for creating an account. It goes back to that logon page that Josh showed you at the beginning. It's easy to find on our website under the grant category. But um, Or if you have questions about your organization's eligibility, I will say that school, as a rule, Nebraska schools, and Nebraska nonprofit organizations are all eligible to apply. So um, 
I think we covered the one question that I saw earlier in chat. Maybe we should go on to take a few minutes for Q&A. We still have five minutes. I've got a question for all of you. Have any of you taken advantage of a Nebraska Arts Council grant in the past? You can say so in the chat if you have. It doesn't look like anyone has in the past, which means that you should have lots of questions. But if you don't, that's all right. You can also email me or, like I said, pick up the phone and I'll be there to answer. Um, I'm just looking at the, the, the chat here. And it looks like Anne answered that question. Oh, you worked with Mona in the past. Michelle uh, in, the, in the chat says, uh, Mona is a great partner uh, for, for these kind of projects. And we work with them a lot on different grant projects. Yeah, a lot of knowledge. Um, yeah. it's an odd time right now having the largest museums in the state, Jocelyn and Mona, both closed for renovations. Yeah. But once they're reopened, our school bus grants can take your students there. <laughs> um, I wish they called each other first. <laughs> yeah, I know, sort of space it out a little bit. Um, I guess the one other thing, going back to the artists and schools grants that Josh talked about, is um, that while our grants do pay the full artist fee, there may be travel costs. If, if you hire an artist who lives over 30 miles from where your site is, um, then, then your organization is required, required to pay some of their travel costs. And we can talk about that at another time. So sometimes finding artists who are near you, near your community, that's something Josh and I can also help with. Um, not that we have artists on our roster from every community in the state, we do not, but we do have a, a wide array of artists in many parts of the state and we can help, help you figure that piece out. We've worked with the Nebraska Museums Association in the past, they're one of our partner spotlight organizations. Mm -hmm. um, is that, do you have uh, resources on your site that might connect a program, say in um, Baird, Nebraska, with any museums that are in their area or artists in their area, or should they call you, contact you? I would say that would be something we would want to talk with them on a case by case basis because the the Nebraska yet yeah, we do work with Nebraska Museums Association and I I've done presentations for them before and I know another staff member is about to this spring a lot of the museums they work with are historical museums they're not really arts museums so for instance if you want a field trip with one of our grants it would need to be really focused on art so to an art center or an arts museum but we might be able to help identify resources close to where where you you reside where where your school is there's not a pre-approved list though uh, and if there's if there's something that seems kind of borderline give me a call send me an email we'll figure it out Anyone else have a question while you have these experts on the call? But we certainly appreciate these opportunities, just having limited budgets, but students who are very interested in the arts and expanding their opportunities in that area. So thank you for your work. Are you the only two in your office? If we call, we'll get one of you. Not exactly. <laughs> We do have a small agency. We have a staff of 10. But when it comes to things that are tied to schools and arts education, you'll usually get sent our way, Josh's or mine. Is it okay if we note your contact information along with the recording to this webinar? Oh, so please do. Okay. And the, I think the first slide that was open when I was talking also included our email addresses and, and the office phone numbers and contact info. 
Okay. Yeah. And if you want to send the PowerPoint, we can post that as well. If that, if you think that would be helpful. Um, we could, or, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Josh, maybe you'll make a PDF of that and send it, send it along to Kim. Yeah. The slides were beautiful. Of course, you're the Arts Council, so. <laughs> we like yeah. things to be pretty. <laughs> Well, we really appreciate your time and, and your work. Um, it's, it's just so valuable and appreciate it. So thanks for talking to us today. And we look forward to finding more ways to, to work with you. Maybe a table at the upcoming Get Connected After School Conference. We can oh, meet that sounds great. after school educators there. When is that coming up, Kim? Um, OK, Jan's on. Jan's always got the date right there on her. The tip of our it's, it's September 22nd, and uh, this year it will be at the CHI Center, Conference Center up in Omaha. Oh, um, and our offices are about three blocks from the CHI Health Center, so. <laughs> Fantastic. We would love to have you. We'll see what we can do. Well, again, thanks for your work, and thanks to everyone who joined today. We appreciate your time. Um, our next webinar is going to be, um, let's see, February 16th, and we're going to learn about the Beyond School Bells Innovation Invitational. Jeff Cole will be sharing about that, so we hope you're able to join um, and learn more about that opportunity, too. Well, thanks. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Joshua. Thanks, nice Kim. To have you today. Thank you. All right. So long.